Okay, so this video is about uh, control um, control system and using Simulink to uh, recreate an adaptive, uh, basically simulate an adaptive control system. So just a review on control systems and feedback control systems. So we have an input. And as you know, when you have an input and it goes through a transfer function, um, the output is basically your input time uh, transfer function. This can be any anything. Let's um, it can be a plant, it can be a device. Uh, it has a basically an equation that defines the output versus input. Um, now let's say, for example, uh, I think the most tangible example is car's cruise control. That means when you when you put your car um, to go with a constant speed, and let's say you are going up the hill, the speed of the car will go lower uh, than what it was before and what you want. So the cruise control, how it works is that it sends a signal back uh, and then your speed would be adjusted. How, how does it work is basically you have a reference, let's say the speed of your car, you want it to be a certain value, and then, but the output uh, here, I have the block diagram here, let's say, you have a point, a constant a speed you want your car to be. And then the speed that is measured by your car, how would you know it's different than, the, than your reference speed? So the most easiest way is just to subtract them. If they're equal, the answer will be zero. That means you don't have any error and your car speed is what you want, is equal to the reference. But if you subtract them and it's not equal to zero, that means you have an error. That error goes to a cruise controller and based on the error, cruise controller will spit out an output that will create the speed that you want. So again, your system, you have a gas pedal control element in your car, and depending on that, you have a car speed. Now, let's say because of some disturbances like hills, wind, etc., you your car speed changes. Then I'm just giving like values that don't make sense, but let's say your reference point is 20 and your car speed is 18. 18 minus 20 is 2, so you have an error. This error goes to cruise controller, and this cruise controller has, depending on uh, what kind of cruise controller you have, um, that I will talk about later. Anyway, this cruise controller will give out an output which fix the car speed to the reference point you want. So the most important uh, part that you have to know is that the value of the car speed is basically compared by the reference point. And if it's not zero, then you have an error. And that error is going through your cruise controller and by some processing, this cruise controller will change the input of the gas pedal to give us the car speed that we want. This cruise controller, okay, you can have um, different kinds. Let's say it's PID. PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative Controller. And the name comes from here because mathematically you have, it has a part that is proportional to the error. A part that is, you take the integral of the, the error times the gain or derivative of the error times the gain and then sum them up. That's where uh, this name comes from. 
and it will tune the output by playing with the gain of uh, by playing with these values of k to get the best output that makes your car speed uh, equal to the reference that you want. So how can you simulate this with MATLAB? So what we did in class, we said uh, just create a transfer function that replaces these two parts, car speed process and gas pedal control element. Put a PID for your controller. This part, you just type sum in Simulink, and then you have an output. So what we did, first of all, how uh, I bring Simulink, you can either type, let me close my Simulink so I can do it. Um, there are some, there are different ways of bringing out Simulink. You can, sorry, uh, you can either type here Simulink and then uh, press enter, it will come up, or you can go to home simulink. Both of them will work. So you go to blank model, and then here, if you click on this library, you have all the components you want. So, so P, if you type, it's already here, but if you type PID in the search, your controller will come up, which is here. So you just take it and drag it to your uh, canvas. Uh, let's say you want, what else I want? I want this part. This is actually simulating if you type sum, it will come. Right here, sum. Type sum, enter. Here is your sum. So you put it here. Um, if you want to, if you want to see your signal, you need a scope. So I think it's a scope. Scope. Yeah. So you can see your signal with a scope. Um, what else? Let's say my reference. Just I put something for my reference. Um, source. Let's say I want my input to be a constant one. And then it goes through a transfer function. So you just type transfer function. Or you can put transfer function first order. So I think we have everything. So I have a reference, I have a controller, I have a transfer function, and a scope. So if you if you right click on a scope, oh, I don't want this. Let's close this. If you right click on a scope. You go to signal and ports, number of input ports, two. Make it two. Uh, if you want to see one with a scope, you can feed it to your scope input. Now, if you run this, you should see one. So you have a constant one. Now this signal, let's say this signal goes through PID, control your controller, a transfer function, and your scope. You want to take the output of this, right? You want to take the output and compare it to your reference, which is one. And you want it to be equal to that. Uh, so there's the plus sign here. You want minus. So you make that minus. Okay. 
So you're taking the signal, output signal, to this sum, and you compare it with the reference you want. It goes through PID. Controller is through transfer function and goes to a scope. So the goal is to have the output signal similar to your uh, reference. So So this is one my reference, and this yellow one is what comes out of this uh, output. And you see they are completely different. This PID controller, as I said, has three parts: proportional, integral, derivative. You can either manually play with these gains um, to make this yellow line close to blue line, or you can uh, click on tune. happening it doesn't come out it's coming PID tuner okay so you see two signals when you click on PID tuner you get these signals then you can play with them and make them uh, close together so when I when I slide these that's what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm playing with the gains of my PID controller. Transit behavior. Okay, response time. I want the response time to be close together. And then I update my blog. And if you go back to your um, scope, you should have a different graph. So it's actually perfect, but it's getting closer to your reference point. Um, so it takes time for it to get to one, but as you see, it will get to uh, it gets to one after uh, some time. Maybe we can tune it more. So response time. I need it to be really fast, so I put it like this. Transit behavior. And then I go back to my plot, to my scope. So as you see, it gets close. Then it goes, eventually your output gets to one. Uh, so the goal is, so after it, actually now after three uh, seconds, it will get to one. So it's not bad. This is your one, your reference, and this is the output of your, the output of all of this here that you are feeding to the scope. And after some time, it converges to one. So this is how you tune your uh, PID controller. You can, um, you can change this to any value. That's the reference. I think in class, um, you did a sinusoidal waveform, a step functions, and you got it really close together. So um, that, that depends on what kind of reference you want. But the steps is just uh, what I explained.